Hi everyone, let me introduce to you my friend Harry, who is a speech robot. He will take us through the case study of beer and diaper today. I will also be asking some questions to him then and there during this video in order to make this video look like an interactive session and also an interesting one for you. So Harry, now it's over to you. Hi everyone. I am Harry. Today let's see the case study of beer and diapers. This video explains the story of the correlation between beer and diaper sales. Before exploring this case study, I would request you to subscribe 5 Minutes Learning channel in YouTube and support me to post more such videos. Also by subscribing, you can keep track of my video updates. For your better understanding, I have enabled this video with English subtitles. Now let's begin the case study. First, Harry, can you explain us what is the relationship between beer and diaper sale? The story was first reported back in the mid-90s, and spread quickly, around the world, as an example of power of data mining. Many people questioned the veracity of the story. So after some research gone through, on the origin of the story, they found that, the beer and diapers story originated in, 1992. When, Karen Heath, an industry consultant with Teradata, was attached to an unspecified Midwest retailer. Heath's beer and diapers discovery, is a good example of something going digitally viral, which was uncommon during those times. Turns out, Heath and her team, were looking at sales of items such as diapers, in particular, because baby supplies, are high margin goods. They were looking for correlates, she wrote SQL queries that discovered, the correlation between, beer, and diapers, which she found to be interesting, and she sent it off to someone in an email. Some time ago, Walmart decided to combine, the data from its loyalty card system with its point of sale systems. The former provided Walmart with demographic data about its customers, the latter gave them where, when, and what those customers bought. Once combined, the data was mined extensively, and many correlations appeared. Some of these were obvious people who buy gin are also likely to buy tonic. They often also buy lemons. However, one correlation stood out like a sore thumb, because it was so unexpected. On Friday afternoons, young American males, who buy diapers, also have a predisposition to buy beer. No one had predicted that result, so no one would ever have even asked the question, in the first place. The story goes on that, once the correlation was uncovered, it was easy to back extrapolate, from the effect to the cause. Another story relates, to a study done in June of 1992, when Thomas Blishock, then VP of Industrial Consulting for NCR, did an analysis for, OSCO drug. They examined 1.2 million market baskets, in 25 stores identifying over, 20 different product couplings, including beer and diapers, fruit juice and cough syrup. The story about how OSCO moved beer next to the diapers, and both made more sales isn't correct though. OSCO took the NCR study, and identified approximately, 5,000 slow-moving SKUs, in its inventory. After removing those items from the shelf, consumers, now finding more items they wanted easier, actually thought OSCO's selection had increased. What the OSCO and the NCR study did was, create a fundamental understanding, that buying habits could be used to enhance the, whole buying experience. Harry, can you please clarify, whether it is an example of data mining? What's most interesting, about the original beer and diapers connection, is that, it isn't an example of data mining or of other types of advanced analysis. Data mining is a process, that looks for patterns in data, so in a sense it is like querying the data. The crucial differences between simply querying the data, and data mining can be summed up as, intent and scale. When humans query data, we start with an idea, 
such as, I think that we sell more DVDs to males than to females. And then we run a query to test the idea, and the answer either confirms or disproves our hypothesis. A data mining algorithm, doesn't have ideas. It has no intention of testing ideas, for the simple reason that it doesn't have any. Heath and her team used, SQL queries running against data, in the retailer's Teradata data warehouse to find the correlation. The idea was to identify items, that tended to be purchased together, and place them together on store shelves. Heath's working hypothesis was that, doing this could boost sales, by an additional percentage. After all, she reasoned, every retailer knows, that if you put two products, next to each other on a shelf, they're more likely to be sold together. Hence, this is an excellent example of the difference between data mining and querying. From 1990, Mudson, a research analyst, ran a number of tests in a different retail settings, validated and then invalidated the claimed correlation. Somewhere around 1993 or 1994, he was working in a drugstore chain, when he first read about this. However, a year later, when he was working in a grocery store chain, he had access to all of this data, and he tried it, but he found no correlation. Later on, Madsen was working with another drugstore chain, in which he was able to validate the beer and diapers correlation. Then in 1997, he found a case in which the correlation seemed especially strong. There was a 0.95 correlation. He asked them about it. They said, they read in Chain Store Age magazine, that says beer and diapers are correlated, so they have put beer next to diapers in all of their stores. What they did was, they created the data, that actually validates the data. In another drug store retailer that same year, he found no correlation. Then, while working with a grocery retailer in the year 2000, he found an example of very weak correlation. At this point, however, it was becoming increasingly difficult to validate the correlation, the story itself was too well known, in 1998, IBM even aired a television ad that used the beer and diapers example. Even if an ostensible correlation were detected, retailers would have to control for cross-promotion at the store level. A store manager, reading or hearing about the beer and diapers correlation, could have positioned them on adjacent shelves. Cross-promoting, means you have no baseline. It means you can't say whether a meaningful connection is there or not. You can't seek correlations in data you created, because any correlation is due to your actions. Harry, can you please summarize the takeaways from this case study of beer and diapers? This case study was not only concerned with the history of the beer and diapers connection, however, in a sense, this correlation is a great example of how and why advanced analytics is different from business intelligence and data warehousing. If you're saying, I want to know if beer and diapers is true, that's the wrong way to look at it. The right way is to say, I want to know whether or not it's true, from the perspective I'm operating in. You can't always just take someone else's model, and apply it in your environment. Unlike business intelligence and the data warehousing, where the data is the data, and you're basically just adding it up, now you're building models, where models have randomness and biases. You have to validate a model and scale it out. The deeper lesson, is that analytics insights aren't always actionable. This is one of the problems with deploying analytics, because you have to have some level of trust in the model. You have to believe that it's going to be better than some decision you can make yourself. As for a definitive answer to the question are sales of beer and diapers correlated? It depends. In today's world, data mining has been upgraded, to business intelligence and predictive analytics. Companies can now think through, how and what people buy, and lay out stores more efficiently. They can offer coupons on items bought together, and have extra stock when demand is going to increase. What the whole retail industry, began to understand, was that with the examination of data, the right amount of the right merchandise could be put on the shelf at the right time. Right amount of the right merchandise, at the right time? Sounds like you figured out how to work smart. Thank you all for watching this video. 
If you have not subscribed yet, please support me by subscribing 5 Minutes Learning Channel in YouTube to keep in track of my new video updates. Thank you, Harry. Thank you, friends, for watching this video. Signing off now. We'll see you soon in another case study with Harry.